all right. All right. So it's not the right man. All right. Uh, it's good to be here today. Uh, I want to say, I'm about to preach. I want to say, giving unto God, first of all, the head of my life. And uh, everybody who was able to come out this evening or this morning for this event. Um, and I'm not going to even dwell on the people who didn't come. Amen. Uh, but I will say that whatever you learned here today, I think we should take it out and like Todrick, like uh, Elder uh, Todrick said, just kind of let people uh, see what you're doing yeah. and understand. Yeah. Um, and this is something right here. Uh, thank Front Putton for doing this to me. Um, <laughs> that's my brother. But uh, he was like, hey, kid, man, you can um, talk. I said, yeah. And then I talked to Mama Cooks. And I said, well, uh, the cost of uh, a successful ministry, that's something that we talk about all the time. We all talk about it. Uh, Susan Cooks has talked to us about it for years and years and years and years. And she still talks about it. Um, and it's really important. And as a kid, we didn't realize how important it was. Yeah. We didn't realize the late nights of rehearsals, the, the praying, the Bible studies, and the teachers that she gave us, even when we come in rehearsal and somebody got a bad attitude and she stopped right there and she uh -oh. sit down and talk to us right. for 30 minutes and tell us this is what you're going to do, this is how you should do it. Right. Uh, even when it came to things like the announcers guild uh, early on in the years, she would teach us before we got up there, we had to know what we were doing. She wasn't just going to say, hey, well, let's, let's go on up and just, just sing a song. You know, it wasn't like that. Yeah. And even um, there are times where, where it says cost. A lot of us don't understand that the money that you invest in yourself or whatever you invest in yourself, that's how you value yourself. All right. So if you invest even even in your physical body if you just decide I want to eat a whole bunch of junk food that means you don't value your life that's true uh -huh. so if you want to have a whole bunch of junk going on in your ministry that means you don't value your ministry if you want to continue to go on and 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 and, and some of y'all might get a little offended because I'm just say what I got to say if you want to continue to go on and when there's an event going on I don't want to pay no money to be on stage for 10 minutes just for $300. That's a lot of money to sing for 10 minutes, right? You know how many how many of these big time gospel artists have sang on stage for 10 minutes for $300 back then? Yeah, yeah. Okay, uh, another thing, people don't want to invest in themselves when it comes to studio time, when it comes to, to getting uh, professional music done, when it comes to getting videos done, when it comes to getting uh, photos done, when it comes to getting all of these different things done, yeah. but yeah, we expect to be an overnight success when it comes to the music ministry. Amen. Ministry is hard as already to begin with. It, it's a hard thing. It's music ministry especially. Yeah. It's hard. You got so many people out here that are doing the same thing. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the problem we have now is somebody started singing yesterday, they got paid $25 to do a concert, so next week, they feel like they're nationally known, so they want to charge $1,500 yeah, yeah, yeah. to sing, and, and it sounds like pots and pans. I'll just say yeah, yeah, yeah. But when people who have been in the ministry for so long come out to do the same thing, people frown up. I ain't paying that for that and this. But you got to think about it. They have worked for so many. Miss Cooks has worked for years. Bishop Fred, I didn't even know who he was. I used to hear his name. I'm like, who's Bishop Fred Jones? He all on Facebook, on, on everything. And I never met him, but I heard some CDs and stuff. And I'm like, the music sounds good, but who is he? So one day I went to Houston, and I did an uh, event with uh, Bishop Giles, uh, uh, Prophet Giles. And his daughter was there. I didn't even know who his daughter was. She was sitting right next to me. She, woo, she was singing. I'm like, this girl singing. Well, she is singing. And she just is singing. Then I went home one night and I was looking at uh, television and they were showing this uh, clipping of something that was coming on PBS. And she was on it. And I said, wait a minute, something ain't right. And he was on there. Yeah. So all this time I've been seeing this man not knowing who it was, hearing his music. You know, and that showed you right there that he working. A lot of times, 
people don't understand that if you're not putting time in with what you're doing, you're not really working. I can put videos up on Facebook all day long. That don't mean I'm working. That's right. That don't mean a lot of people will figure that paying the cost is I'm gonna sit up and figure out when the next the next best subject I can talk about on Facebook or the next best social media is good. But a lot of those million, two million, three thousand million views happen on accident. All right. They happen on accident. When the Willis family got in that car that day to do that song, they weren't thinking they were gonna get that 30, 27, 30 million views on one video. They weren't thinking they were just singing. Just singing. And y'all was back there playing drums. And me and Punt looked at the video and said, Pete, man, something ain't right about this video. I said, man, this video got 100,000 views, but that was in like within two hours. Then all of a sudden, boom, 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 yeah. boom, 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 And it went, and it went up. That don't happen all the time. So that's not, you, you, if you're sitting up there basically focusing on trying to do that, and then you're going to wake up to be an overnight success, it's not going to happen like all that. Right. It takes practice. Yeah. That's number one, practice. you got to practice. When I do stage plays, we got to practice. When I do com I don't practice my comedy. I guess I practice just my daily thing, you know. But if I say somebody call and say, we want you to come and do a comedy show at 30 set, I already kind of go over what I'm going to talk about. And even when I get that, it changes up. I'm still kind of rehearsing in my head. Right. Yeah. If I'm going to sing a song, I haven't sang in years. I sing on Sunday morning. I went to the studio the other day, tried to record a song I, I did back in 2004. I almost fell out because I had been practicing. <laughs> I started choking up, and stomach started hurting and stuff, and my head started getting dizzy, I was like, ooh. So I said, it's time to come home. Yeah. yeah. So I'm telling y'all, that's what, you gotta practice. I remember nights being with Miss Cooks, we practiced and practiced and practiced. Pun was on the drums, Pun was like, man, shoot, I'm tired. I was on the bass, I was like, man, can we go home? I'm like, can we go home? now? y'all gonna get this right, because you're not going nowhere embarrassing me or yourselves. And no mention the twins, but the twins got up there in the rehearsals. We bless you, bless you, bless you. Oh, if you keep saying it like that, we gonna be here. We gonna be here. And that's how it was. You have to pay what, I mean, you gotta pay for it. I remember uh, some years ago, since Denise did a well, she was actually the first one that I had seen even do, I think, do a gospel rap concert. In Bryan, Texas, we had names now that big, they weren't even like really big Christian, Christian rappers. Uh -huh. But when they came in, we had, I think we had like Blue, we had like DJ Delight, we had uh, Lecrae. Lecrae came in, we had T. Dye, all these guys came in and they had to pay to perform. We paid. But see, if they wouldn't have paid, guess what? They wouldn't do it. Get right. So instead of us always looking for something, yeah. we got to invest something in ourselves. So, so, right. yeah. yeah. You can't be walking around. Some people beg so much, their hands look like cups. Just, yeah. just, just look like a styrofoam <laughs> cup. So, right there. Right. I'm just saying. You, I, I can call somebody right now, Bishop, and say, hey, I got a comedy show going on. Man, would y'all like to come out and uh, do it? Man, how much is it? <laughs> I just asked somebody, I'm doing a, a cancer awareness show. This Saturday. I asked the guy, they want to, man, what's the budget? You got a green room. You got, I said, do you have some footage? Do you have any videos? Do you have any DVDs other than your Facebook stuff? Yeah. Do you have something I can use? No. Well, well, uh, you know, we're working on the video right now. I said, okay. I said, I'll get back in touch with you. I ain't talked to him. And my cousin who coming from all the way from Dallas, Texas, been all over the nation, said, hey, cuz I'm gonna come down, cause that's for my auntie. But she travels all over the place with big name comedians. But a lot of people don't understand, until you show other people that you invest in yourself. And Punt, Punt, we even talked about it, Punt told me, he said, Q man, these people are not gonna even call you unless they see you working on your own. And see you working on your own. Is that true, Bishop? That's true. That's right. These industry people, they're not going to call somebody and just say, oh, we're going to give you all this. This is yours, right? We're going to give you all this right here. We're just going to give you that. we going to give you. Even when I watch the movie, like Cadillac Calls, Cadillac Records, and stuff like that. Man, them people had to work for They got them Cadillac. That's all they had was Cadillac, but that Cadillac meant a whole lot. Now to, uh, what's his name? Lil, Lil Walker. Lil Walker didn't really want that. He wanted to do Cadillac. Yeah. Yeah, the wall was working. But the 
thing is, is we got to understand in the ministry, we have to work hard. Yeah. That's right. And not only do you have to practice, you have to make sure that when you present yourself to people, you present yourself as a ministry first. If you're gonna be, if you're gonna say ministry, that's what you got. And it basically, all you're doing is just you gotta live what you're talking about to these folks. Yeah. That's paying the cost. Cause the stuff that other people are used to doing, you may want to do it, but you can't find yourself doing that because you get caught doing that. Gotta shut your whole career down, and shut your whole ministry down. People don't want to fool with you. What people don't understand is, in church, people want people that come for church, literally. I call people and they call and say, hey, you got a Christian comedian? And I say, I can't come. They send other comedians down and they'll call me and I send another comedian and they say, hey, that ain't what we wanted. We wanted a Christian comedian. So it's, it's like a lot of people are, are starting to get to the point to where they think everything is instant gratification. You're right. It's not instant. It's not. It's not. And I wish a lot of these younger musicians, a lot of younger musicians that are here in our town could be here to hear this because what we're seeing now is a lot of our younger musicians are automatically learning to play instruments and feeling like they can go to a church and say, Pastor, I want five hundred dollars a Sunday. Yep. No. Yeah, man. You can play two songs. Yeah. And most of them are transposed. Yeah. Yeah. One key. Right. One key. Yeah. You can play the bass, but you can play dum ga 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 dum 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 but that don't fit every song. You can play, I'm chasing after you, but you can't play, oh Lord my God, when I am awesome one day. You can't, you gotta understand that you gotta pay the cost. That's right. And I, I see it all the time. When I sit out here in the musicals, and man, it be a slow musicians. Everywhere we go, it's a whole bunch of They wanna show their skill, they wanna show their skill so they can show the next person, hey man, um, man I can come play for your church. How much you pay your? How much you pay your musician? I heard a young boy say that one time, and I looked at him. I said, "Did you just ask that pastor how much you pay your musician?" <laughs> yeah, um, I've been looking for a church to play for, and it's almost to the point the way it, it's almost like a point. I need a job, so I'm gonna find a church. I'm gonna learn how to play. I'm gonna find a church to play for. Now realizing, I'm not the best musician. Yeah. I will say this, Mr. Donnie, Minister Donnie Nelson. Is one of those musicians that can play anything on the piano yeah. because he was raised that way. Yeah. Yeah. I had to learn and find my way through. I have a grandma slap me across the head and say, You're gonna play just like this right now. <laughs> no, Sheriff was anointed to play. You know, I think I was anointed to play, but these young people watching them, but I tell people all the time, they've been playing for so many years. That's why they can go and say, that's why when the pastor comes and he say, Well, hey, I want to give you this much to play. That's why. A lot of young musicians don't understand. Don't. Yeah. Musicians, musicians have to direct, teach voices. You have to be prayerful when you come. We don't just come and play on Sundays in rehearsals. We prepare it all week long. Yeah. It gets so frustrating sometimes when they'll call and say, well, you got five choirs. You got that one choir. The mission sister, I love it when they sing, because I ain't got to practice with them. We just sing whatever. Yeah. But you got the first Sunday choir, the mass choir. You got the praise team. You got the youth choir. You got the Brotherhood Choir, then you got the Mission Choir. Yeah, yeah. So I got several different types of songs I got to put together yeah. for a choir rehearsal. And if you have not put your time in to understand that, you will not understand that. Yeah. Because a lot of us, a lot of us uh, got to understand another cost we got to pay. You got to be able to know, you got to know, like they were talking, you got to know when to shut up. Okay. Yeah. You, got, you got to know. When to shut up. Yeah. Sometimes you may hear something that you may not like. That's like critiquing. You got somebody that's been in the ministry for so many years, and she tell me something, and I get mad like she don't know what she talking about. <laughs> and keep doing what you're doing that she told you. Keep doing it. Guess what? You're going to pay the cost of losing some stuff because she already told you this is the way you should do this. This right. is the way you should do that. Amen. Right? Um, also, we have, to, we have to be prepared when we go somewhere. We have to be prepared. You never know what's going to happen. Yeah. You have to be prepared. I don't know if anybody ever experienced being on the side of the road in the vehicle. I don't know. Hey, can I tell you the story? We had a van. It was Sherry Good Fun. We had a van. We loved our van. Matter of fact, the van was a blessing to us. It was given to us, wasn't it? 
We drove that van for a while. But there was one time we was on our way to Dallas. But that old van, that old van stopped. And Ricky, y'all know Ricky. Ricky was on that van, hit that gas pedal. That van said, I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't want to. Ricky said, come on, baby, come on, baby, come on, come on. But guess what? You know what we didn't do? We didn't turn back around. What we do, Sherry? We went on to Dallas. We went to Dallas. Was it Dallas or Waco? It was a long way. We went there. We went there. And now look at it. Now look at it. They got a choice of what they can drive in when they go somewhere to sleep. Because guess what? They paid the cost a long time ago. A long time ago. And, and, and when you have paid the cost, it's somehow you have a choice of where you want to go. You can have a choice of where you want to travel to. Man, I'm telling you, I sit up and look at my boy punting all the time. I'd be like, man, if I if man, if I could take about 18 hours over the water, I should fly with you, man. You know, man, you come on. No. But this man has been some places. I like the way they look on camera. I'd be like, go live for me so I can see you. You know, this man has been places where people not speaking the same language we're speaking. Also, Bishop has been places that most people wish they could go. I don't wish I could go. I don't like water like that. I, I flew to Florida one time, and instead of us going on land, we went out. I had been to Florida so many times on a plane, but when he hit that water, it was something just didn't feel right. Yeah, something didn't feel right. But I'm telling y'all, to be able to do those things, they paid the cost over the years. I remember I can go back to, to the PlayStation in Pun's living room why they supposed to be playing the game and he doing beats, cause the dude upstreet wants beats. I remember recording the CD of Pun's PlayStation Beats. Dudes were laughing. Man, that boy ain't got it. that boy ain't doing no, you know what I'm saying? He ain't gonna do no beats, you know what And that's how people were doing. But if he wouldn't have sat in there and kept doing those beats on that PlayStation, right? He wouldn't would be where he is right now. Right. Being successful. Yes. And now he's taking what he's learned. Uh, 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 without an education and applying an education to it, do you know this man is gonna be a guru when he does? Right. I'm telling you, this man, cause he gonna know the business, he's gonna know everything inside out. Yeah. That goes to my next point. Don't expect to be in the music ministry. I know it's church, God gonna bless you, you can pray for anything. Mm -hmm. But God also said, it said in the Bible, study to show thyself. Right. You got to study sometimes. You got to study. You got to study. Workshops, conferences. Uh, uh, I, I, I had to take voice lessons, not talking, not singing, but talking. Because I wanted to do like voiceovers and, and stage plays and all this stuff. And doing church stage plays is good. Gospel stage plays is good. But when you get out there and they'll tell you something like, oh, you've been doing it wrong the whole time. And you're like, what? <laughs> so it took me, I had to drive from here to Austin, here to Austin, here to Dallas, here. Sometimes my gas didn't even want to let me go, but I went anyway. Because my thing is, I have to get there to learn what I needed to learn. So now I can go on a radio station or go on a television station or if Miss Cook say I need a commercial or I can do that because they teach you how to speak, but you gotta pay for that. Yes. That's right. Most people don't wanna pay for that. They wanna pay, they don't wanna pay, but they think it's worthless when they come to an event and you sit out there judging or y'all sitting out there judging and y'all say, well, hey, when you rock, don't be rocking crazy. They think you picking at them, but you're really not. You just telling them, hey, you gotta, you gotta present yourself a certain way. Especially with us folks, because we talk about you. Y'all know what we talk about. Y'all know it. Y'all know it. We sit right out there in the audience. Maybe look at that girl up there. <laughs> All off beat, rocking all off beat. Her mama no better than that. It ain't even matching. It ain't. Why she hollering so much? You start hollering. Why you? You know, my time up? Okay. Well, just to say this, always remember, there is a cost. I didn't know I had time. You should have just did like this in the comedy. They do this, boop, boop, that's just like that. But uh, always remember, I'm sitting down. Always remember, there is a cost if you want to have a successful ministry. Right. And in the end, you're going to reap the benefits. God bless you.
Amen. That was really good. Yeah. That was really good. He was telling you the truth. Yeah. yeah. That's good. Amen. Amen. Come on, show it some love. Amen. And it just shows you, you know, he's got a lot of years of experience on him. Oh, yeah. So he didn't have to, because it was just a last minute thing, but when you got experience, yes. you can just get up like Bishop and just, just speak. Amen. Yes. Amen. If you hide that word within you. Yes. Amen. Yes. So we're not going to prolong, but we thank you, uh, Minister Q. Amen. Amen. Great job. Great job. Great job. Great job. Amen. At this time, come on, uh, Brother Punted. Uh, the program to move forward. Amen. He got his little paper with him and he's coming. Amen. How are y'all doing this afternoon? I won't be before you long like you. <laughs> Just give you a little something where God has given me today. And I hope it'll be a blessing to somebody. I always tell people, I don't, I don't know it all, but I just give you what I do know. Amen? Amen. Amen. And even like with artists, you know, uh, yes, God has blessed me to do a lot of different things that some artists don't have the opportunity to do or have yet. But I always tell them, I'm at places like this because I'm not done learning. Amen. Amen. All right. And I'm humble enough to know that. 